Hello. Uh, so I shall be explaining how to use PHP list. PHP list is a mass mailing system. Um, basically, this you, it's a, in your case it's accessible through this URL. I'll be sending that by email. Um, you key in your login and password and click continue. Uh, now here you can see uh, this message that's uh, telling us basically that there's a new version. This is something I'll handle myself for you, so you don't need to bother about it. And here is your sort of dashboard, which has the most common tasks that you're most likely to be using. First of all, it's important to know that a campaign means a mail shot, so it's, it's, that's how PHP list uh, refers to them. As well, uh, subscribers are people who are subscribed in your mailing list, um, and uh, the subscribers are split up in lists. In fact, if I had to click on subscribers and subscriber lists, these are uh, 27 lists which you had sent me, uh, and they're imported here. Each list has a name and can even have a category. I haven't categorized them for you, but if you like, you can do it yourself. In fact, here, yeah, PHP list is suggesting that you should do so. Uh, if I click on this icon here, I can see the members of the list. I can edit the list, basically the list name. I can start a new campaign targeting only this list. And I can import subscribers by copying and pasting them, or I can delete the list. Now, it's important to know um, that one subscriber can belong to a number of lists. Uh, if, that, if that's the case, when you send a mail shot to all your lists, the subscriber will likely receive the email a number of times. So ideally, uh, you have to be a bit careful to ensure that each subscriber only belongs to one list or you're likely to get complaints. Now, if I click on the icon here, I can see um, this is a test list which I created myself to test the system. I can download them as a CSV to be imported into Excel or I can import more people into the list by copying and pasting emails. Now here, um, there are three email addresses which are obviously wrong. Um, the idea was uh, to test bounces. I'll be explaining later on how that works, but that's why they are definitely don't exist addresses. Now, so that's the uh, uh, example list, and you can create as many as you like. Now, to actually send a campaign, what you do is click on campaigns, send the campaign, and uh, it opens up the new campaign screen. Each campaign must have a title. This one I'm going to call test for, or test campaign for, from by default goes to mailing at Malta Management, which is sort of the default email address, and Malta of Management. Now, this uh, in, a, in the recipient email, this will show uh, Malta Institute of Management as the sender, and this will be the address. But obviously, you can change it as much as you like here. Uh, now, this entry content, PHP list has the facility to either compose a message using the editor, which is shown here below, or you can send a web page. You would send a web page if you had to get, for example, uh, a developer who designs a complicated uh, content of the uh, complicated content of a message, things like, for example, adding certain widgets which you would not normally have, and that can be done as a web page, and then here you simply key in the URL of the page, and PHP list will send the whole thing, or, which is most likely, what you will be doing is composing a message. Now, um, when you compose a message, actually here, what is happening, the system is writing the code for you. Now I'll show you. Uh, but the interface is basically very similar to Word, uh, Microsoft Word, which I'm sure you're accustomed to. And basically, uh, the the available stuff is uh, are things which you're probably familiar with, things like bold italics, and here you simply just type away. Now, since this is a, a web editor, it's important to know that there are two kinds of enters. For example, if I have to key in something and press enter, that's what enter does. It skips a line. If I don't want to skip a line, what I do is click shift enter. This is important to know, because if you don't know it, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to remove the spaces in between fresh lines. You also have things like justification and uh, alignment of the text, uh, indentation, you can choose different styles, fonts, colors, etc. Um, and most, more importantly, you can also add images, which I'm just going to show you soon. Uh, before I do that, before I mentioned that PHP list is writing the code for you, in fact, if you had to click source here, 
you see this is HTML code. These are HTML codes. So basically, it's converting the text you key in into hypertext markup language HTML. Now, um, most likely as well, you might need to paste uh, text from other sources such as Microsoft Word. In that case, it's very, very important to remember that you have to use one of these gadgets here, either paste from Word, Control V to paste the browser, it doesn't support pasting, so you cannot, or else you can paste as text as well. Uh, if you press Control Shift V to paste, okay? Uh, because the browser I'm using doesn't support the, the toolbar. Or, which is what I usually do, uh, I copy, for example, a Word document into Notepad and then from Notepad paste directly here. The reason why I have to be careful with MS Word is that MS Word has a lot, includes a lot of hidden code, which you don't see when the document is open in Word or a compatible uh, Word processor, but would would show up in a web page or a, on an email so you have to be careful obviously you're going to test the email so no need to worry much about it another thing which you most likely you need to do is adding hyperlinks now to add a hyperlink you simply select the text here click on the hyperlink button the chain this is what's going to be displayed and here you key in the url these you don't really need to use because we're sending emails here uh, and simply click OK. And for example, if I had to do www.google.com, now you see that it's changed color and become underlined. And if I send that in an email, if the user clicks that link, it will be taken to Google. Uh, as well, another thing which you most likely need if you send plain text, if you send emails uh, which are composed here, is bulletin. Now, when you do want to do a bulleted list, basically you have the bullets here or numbered lists and you just type it in now it's important to remember when you want to make a bulleted list ideally you would use this tool rather than trying to do it by pressing the space bar or copying from word or anything like that so ideally you would format because these are fully uh, html and email compatible uh, you can also make tables as well um, what's a table a table is like as you would imagine here yeah, for example Oh, sorry, that's an image, a table here. Yeah. It asks you how much rows and columns do it, uh, border size, how you want the cells spaced. That's just to show you that's a table. And now you can have data in a tabulated form. This is important because although you might not need a table with uh, borders as shown here, each table can also be without uh, table properties. A table can be without border, so it's a table without border. It doesn't show at all. Here it shows you the border so that you can see it while you're editing, and you can have tabulated data. So sometimes, even though you might not want to show the table itself, but you want the data to show in separate columns, using a table is how you do that. You can also insert flash, which is now obsolete, so we needn't bother about that. Um, and that's how you edit. Now, as well, you you'll probably need, in your case, uh, since you use uh, a template which is which is created by a designer. In that case, you will, you'll need to import an image. Now, to do that, you've got this widget here. Click on it. Now, you can either browse the server to find images which are already on the server. These example images I've placed myself earlier during testing. Or you can upload an image directly. By doing so, choose the image and upload it. In this case, I'm going to browse the server and find an image for example this one it's telling you the size here obviously you have to be careful that it's not too big ideally uh, in an email the width would be around 800 pixels uh, so do that preferably as well in this case this is obviously an example image but if i were doing this for real i would see to it that the image itself is already 800 pixels rather than doing this to reduce it uh, because that would save up on bandwidth and speed Click OK, and there's the image which you have, which you have just place, placed. Now, the image obviously can be removed again, and also you can apply things like uh, vertical spacing and horizontal spacing and uh, alignment. Alignment, if you do left alignment, the text will come, would, would, uh, would come here, for example, not under the image. But again, if you're going to use one image as a template to send by email, in that case, you don't have to go much about this except uploading the images as I've just shown you.
Now, once you have your content ready, the next thing you'll be doing is scrolling down here uh, and sending a test message. So, this is our message at the moment. And I'm going to send the test message to my email. And here you see send test mail to and success. Now let's switch to my email. And here, here is the email which we have just sent. Obviously, by default, the system includes uh, where people can opt out or they can even log in and change their preferences in PHP list. That's obviously very important for GDPR reasons. I would also suggest that you should edit the footer here, this footer, uh, or we create a template including the footer, and there you would include a link to your GDPR privacy policy on the MIM website, so that people know that your their data is being retained according to your privacy policy. So. Now, basically, we're done with, with the message, and now we need to send it. So, you can press Save and continue editing. In fact, if you don't press that, you still won't lose it when you switch tabs, but I like to do it anyway. Now, the Format tab, uh, you can decide if you want to send, to send a message as HTML or text. Now, if you do text, that means no images, not nothing, just plain text. This is included here because uh, there are a number of people who use, uh, for example, mobile phones that only display text. And if you want to cater for a special audience like that, then you might consider doing that. Usually you won't, and you just send HTML messages. The scheduling tab <coughs> is there so that you can uh, schedule a message to be sent at a certain time on a certain date. Like, for example, you can prepare it because you're going on vacation and it will be sent automatically on the desk on the date. Lists is where you choose the lists you're going to send it to. Now, here we have all the lists. I'm going to find my test list, which is this one, and just include my test lists. And finally, I click on number five, finish. Uh, and here it asks you if you want to receive an email by this from the system telling you that you started sending and then email when it finishes sending. And you can also include Google Analytics to see uh, uh, how many people opened, etc., and be able to track what happened to the emails you're sending. Okay. Next thing, you place the, the campaign in the queue and you click Process Queue. Now, if you don't click Process Queue, you could have another campaign ready later on and when you process queue both campaigns will be sent together but this is not very advisable um, because you have to be very careful that the messages that you sent are not labeled as spam and uh, services like gmail and hotmail have limitations in that for example if an email address sends email to their users a large number of emails per hour they might block you so you have to be very careful when you're done you simply press process queue now, this example, obviously, it has only five emails, so it took a second, but usually it, it will probably take quite a bit more than that. Now, one other thing that this system does as well is manage bounces. What are bounces? Bounces are emails that are come back because the user's mailbox doesn't exist, for example, or is full, or anything like that. And the system is programmed that after a number of bounces, I think in this case it's four bounces, the email will be blacklisted and we will no longer keep sending email to that account. This is very, very important because if you keep sending uh, bounces, you know, the, the provider we're using, SendGrid, will most likely uh, start to blacklist you as a, as a client and might even refuse you as a client. So, how do you handle bounces? Basically, what you do is just come here, System, Manage Bounces, and you can do Process Bounces. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to go to the mailbox, there have been no bounces so far, fetch the emails from the mailbox, okay, and uh, if there are bounces, it counts them and deletes them. After, when a user reaches the number of count uh, bounces that we placed in config, he will be blacklisted and removed from the list. So that's basically how you handle bounces. You also have statistics. Statistics, you can view opening of emails, obviously at the moment, um, the, the tests are only a number of, there is no number of emails, but once you start sending the real ones here, it would be interesting to look at exactly what's happening. 
you can see, for example, here, um, the test email was sent to five people and only one viewed. So actually one opened the email. You can also see click statistics. So if your email includes a link to your website, for example, or to a booking form or whatever, uh, this system will show you how many people actually through here, how many people actually clicked on the link. And you have some, some other things, but, but these are mostly uh, the important things here. <coughs> um, basically, that's it. Once your website is up and running, uh, we could even include a form. In fact, here, yeah, if you look around, you'll find where to do it. We can include a form that will be shown in, a, in your website so that people, when they uh, want to join your mailing list, they can simply enter their email, etc., and be included in one of your mailing lists. Thank you.